Okay, so we've got it split in half. And now you can see that line running right down the middle there. That's the pith, that's your troublemaker. We need to get rid of that with the ax. Once we've gotten rid of that and now that it's split in half, a lot of these pressures that could cause cracks later on are almost gone. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use the ax to carve out this bit here. So we're almost using the ax a little bit like a really rough plane, you know, trying to just take in, getting rid of one or two millimeters of wood right from this top surface here. So we're gonna go from using an ax as a splitting tool now to an ax as a cutting tool. The very first thing we've got here is posture. You wanna be in a safe position, okay? I do a lot of my axing sitting down. Um, you can do, you can have a high chopping block if you want to and do it standing up. The best thing to avoid if you possibly can is that you're stooping over so you'll soon get a really sore back if you do it that way. Now, when we were using the ax before, uh, I was using it right down here holding it with my non-dominant hand when I'm splitting. Now when I'm cutting it, I'm moving my hand up here because here you get a lot of power, but very little control. Waggles all over the place. Whereas up here, you can still get good power if you use the right technique, but uh, you can have a lot more control close to the head, okay? Um, so the technique that I do, off to the side, I want this ax to cut in a straight line going down and I want it to bite into the wood like that, so that means I have to put the wood at an angle, like that. If I put the wood straight, it just glances off, like that, okay? So I want it to be like this, where it just bites in. This is the ax swing. What you do, you're gonna be using the forearm, and you're gonna be using your wrist. Now you keep your elbow in close to your body, keep your elbow low. You come down with your forearm, and then as you get close to it, your wrist goes down like that, okay? So, I'll show you how you, the, the actual movement is like that. Okay, my elbow should be in closer, but I've just got it out there for the video, but like that, okay? It's this little snap of the wrist. That's what makes it really powerful and really controlled. And in some uh, types of carving, say if you just want to go around the, the, the rim of your spoon, you just use your wrist. You don't even move your forearm. Okay, so it's a really good one to practice. A lot of people when they're starting out, they go like this. They keep their wrist dead straight. And you lose a lot of your control, or you lose a lot of the power like that. Keep that wrist loose, and that's the difference. Well, I actually start at the bottom, and I'm gonna come halfway up. I don't wanna go closer to my fingers. When you swing in this ax, it should never come above where your fingers are. Your fingers are held behind the blank, just pinching it like that, and I start at the bottom. And I'm just removing, remember, about a millimeter or two of wood from the top surface there. So I've gone up, you can see I've put some, these little kind of like stop cuts in it like that, yeah? And then what that does, when I actually drive that ax back down, is actually already set the depth. See, you've got a nice big flake of the material off there, very thin, and that's gone. You can see the pith there on the top bit. When I want to do that bit, I just flip it over and do exactly the same on the other side. There you have it. Pith, all gone, okay? Uh, so that is a much more stabilized piece of wood now. So here we have it. The piece of wood split in half with the ax, pith removed, and now it's ready to have the design drawn on it. If your piece of wood is just a little bit thicker than this, you may also wanna do another split going straight down there where you actually take the back off and it becomes almost like a plank, a wonky plank. But whatever you choose, the next thing to do is actually draw your design on. So, here we have it. A Swedish butter spreader drawn onto a piece of wood. Now we've got to use this ax to get this out of this piece of wood. Um, now the first thing we're gonna do before we even put ax to the piece of wood though, you, we, we need a lessening grain, okay? We've all heard of the phrase of going with the grain. 
And this is where it comes from because what, if you actually go against the grain, what happens is the tool, whatever tool you're using, if it's a hand tool that is, um, it will actually bite into the grain and it will split and it will tear out the fibers and it will ruin a, a perfectly good butter spread or a spoon in seconds. If you actually go with the grain, you end up with a much smoother finish and a much uh, easier ride for you and your tools. When you're carving with the grain, you're always carving from a high point down to a low point. Okay, so you can see here the, the, the spot, the back of the butter spreader is kind of a little bit higher there in the middle. So if I was cutting with a knife or an axe, I would be going in that direction, always away from the high point. Down there, and then down there, okay? Now on the underside, it's a little bit more complicated, but the same thing applies. You've got a high point just here, so I'd go down there, okay? And a high point here, and that would go down here, high there, going down there. And this little bit here, this is the trickiest part to wax out because you've got a high point on both sides and a low point in the middle. So you can't just, like on here for example, you move your, you move your tool from there right down to the end. So it's one movement, okay? On here, you can't do that because if I move my tool all the way down there and start carrying on that way, then I'm gonna go up the hill again, okay? So that's where I'm gonna start getting tear out. So first thing here, using the same technique that you've just done to remove the pith. So keeping your elbow in close to your body, doing that, keeping that wrist loose. And here you can see it. Now one other thing is, this log, because I haven't split the back of it like I was talking about before, is quite thick still, yeah? So I wanna actually take off this bit as well. I wanna make this nice and thin now. You can actually do that before you even start um, axing out the line there. And actually, if you do it before, uh, you'll usually find it a little bit easier to keep to the line because you're not having to hit the ax so hard. So I'm just gonna take mine out now. So that is now a lot thinner and a lot easier for me to do these next steps. So this bit and this bit under here. So I'm just gonna quickly take off the back of the handle. And again, this one is going from a high point down to a low point. So that's a nice, easy move. Now you may be wondering at this point, why have I got this extra bit here? Okay, now here is the reason why. Because in order to get in here, I need to do some pretty interesting cuts going down here. So if, I'm, if I don't have this, I have to hold here and then come in with my ax like this. Now if I do that, that's getting pretty close to my fingers. So I wanna give myself a little bit of a safety tab to hold onto there, so I can come in nicely there and keep away from my fingers. So I need to cut from this high point down to a low point there and a low point there, okay? Now, if I was to do that now, I would, by the time I got down to the bottom there, I would have started a crack that goes straight into here. So what I need to do is put in a line going down here and I need to saw it down. Now you can also do it with an ax and uh, a, a saw is more efficient and an ax is more fun. I'll let you decide which one you want to do there. What I'm going to do, just draw, draw the line there. You don't have to draw the line. Again, this is just to show you where it's going. Just there, okay? Just down to the lowest point. Now, can you see I've not gone right to the bottom there? Uh, the reason why is because if you come down here and then here as a straight line, you're going to want to keep this nice little curve in there. And if by the time you've put the curve in, you lose a little bit of extra material underneath because you've got to undercut it a little bit just here. Um, so just stop about a millimeter short of that and then by the time you've got your curve in you can still stick to that line just there okay now i'm going to use the saw just to be nice and quick so now we've got a saw cut in place and now i'm ready to start cutting with the axe
As you get down to here, lower off the pressure with your axe a little bit. If you whack this too hard, even with that stop cut there, it could still go all the way through. So, even though I start off a little bit hard, by the time I get there, I'm just using the weight of the axe. And even with this little safety tab to hold on to, it still gets pretty close to your fingers. So, so just care, go careful as you're starting out. Just easing my way a little bit closer every time. Now, if you're finding it hard going when you do this stuff, if you find that, you know, axing down or any of this, if you're finding it difficult, let me give you a little tip. Now, this, is, this applies to knife work or ax work. Now, instead of cutting along a flat like this bit here, what you can do, you can actually carve the ridges instead these bits and these bits, and you do it in a three-step process. So here I've, I've carved the flat, okay? And, and, and if you're just starting out, you may find that a bit, a bit heavy going, particularly if you've got a wider piece of wood. So instead of doing that, go down that side, that side, which leaves a ridge in the middle, and then you take down that. So it's one ridge, two ridge, and then a third ridge, which is left by the other two. Keep doing that process and you'll get down. So I'm coming down here and taking off that first ridge. And I'll take off the second ridge. And you can see there, there's another ridge that's just been left in the middle. And then you just take off that one. And that allows you to get through the wood a lot easier. Now here, I've got my hand right at the end of this handle, which is another reason why I put that safety tab on there, okay? If I had it here and I'm cutting towards my knuckles, that's really dangerous. My hand's all the way down here, I'm coming down at an angle like this, okay? If I was to come down at an angle like that, bang, bang, it could bounce and go straight into my hand. But because I've got a steep kind of line going down there, it's okay, I'm just coming down, And that is ready for knife work.